Tell me if this sounds familiar. You walk into your classroom and it's dead silent. There are a couple whispers here or there, but for the most part, everyone's quiet. Now, this is an issue. How are you going to have a good discussion, an impactful lesson, if nobody's involved? My name is Brandon Griffin, and today I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools for helping students open up, interact, and have some fun. Let's do this. Mentimeter is an interactive presentation software used by educators and corporations to improve engagement and learning. Now, I recently started my first job as an assistant professor of management as a business school. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to make my classes more engaging and I wanted to make them fun and interactive. In prior classes, when I was a student, I remember using a software called Kahoot. So I went online and I actually found a cheaper alternative called Mentimeter. The free version of Kahoot doesn't allow enough students or enough users for the size of class that I had. The class that I had was 45 students and I found Mentimeter to be a really good alternative for cheaper. Now, Mentimeter is similar to Kahoot. Students on their computers or on their phones will be able to interact with you as a professor. They will be able to work on quizzes, competitive quizzes. They can answer open-ended questions and they can do a whole lot of other things, but it is a way for students to interact with you as the instructor. Now, this type of software has a lot of different names. It can be called interactive presentation software. That can be more of a corporate or a large gathering scenario where it's called an interactive presentation software. In the education realm, it's called a student response system or game-based learning. But the whole entire reason for using Kahoot or using Mentimeter is to have more engagement and more collaboration and in interactivity with the audience, whether that be students, whether that be managers, whether that be customers. It is just to involve more people in the process of learning. Now, studies show that Kahoot and other similar game-based learning programs positively impact learning performance, classroom dynamics, student and teacher attitudes, and it will reduce student anxiety. Now, it isn't perfect. There are some things that are wrong with it. There are some things that won't work for every student. But for the majority of students and the, the majority of people, this is a fun way to interact, compete, and have some fun in the classroom, and I really enjoy using it. Now, when I use Mentimeter specifically in my class, I do four different things. One, I like to do an icebreaker. That is where students get to talk to each other or I get to learn more about them. And it just kind of breaks, literally breaks the ice and it gets them talking and flowing and gets things moving. Get, gets things moving. And two, I like to do a check-in question. I like to ask how they're doing in the class. Do they have any specific questions for me or about the syllabus or about any assignments that we're doing? And after I introduce the class and I open things up, then I have my lecture. Now, I can use this in my lecture. I can have midway lecture check-ins. I can have them go out and find things. The other day, I had them look up company's vision and mission statements, and I had them put them in here so we were able to see them and go over them as a class. Now, after my lecture, after everything's completed, I like to have an end of lecture quiz, and that will really drive home the point of what we were learning. And it will also help me identify what things and what items students are not understanding as well. Now that I've introduced Mentimeter, let's look at it from the teacher's perspective and from the student perspective. After I welcome students into class, I put this instructions page onto the screen. And what students do is they scan with their phone, they scan this QR code, or they go to menti.com. And what happens is the students on their phone are taken to the special menti website where they are able to interact with me. After students have joined through this instructions page, I like to open it up by asking some type of icebreaker question. Either that's asking them a question or having them go find the answer from someone else. So here I said, ask the person behind you what their favorite movie is. And that will get people talking and the class will immediately erupt with noise because people, instead of being silent, they'll start talking. So someone will say that their favorite movie is Top Gun. And when they submit it on their phone, it'll immediately pop up on the screen. And students like seeing people have the same interests as them. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's humorous, sometimes it's just fun seeing what your other students enjoy. And it's a way for you to get to know them a little bit better. Now, after I've broken the ice, students are now chatty, but I have to rein it in a little bit. So the next question that I ask is, do you have any questions for me specifically about the class? And what they can do is they can ask specific questions. So they can ask, for example, when is the test? 
and they can submit it and it'll show up on the screen. And I like to answer these one by one. Now students can ask these anonymously and I will be able to help them. And most often students will have similar questions to the other students in the class. So after I've broken the ice and we've had a little bit of fun and I've asked if they have any questions from the prior lecture or about the class in general, I say phones down, listen up. So they put their phones down, we go ahead and do our lecture, and after I do this, it's usually more interactive and the students are more engaged. And honestly, it's a better lecture. Now, at the end of my lecture, after supposedly they've learned what we've, what we've been talking about, I like to pull up the instruction page again. And when students see this instruction page, they'll pull up their laptop, they'll pull out their smartphone, scan this QR code or go to menti.com and enter this code and they will be able to participate with the entire class. And what I like to do, I like to have a quiz competition. And what happens is all the students come in, and this is kind of like a regular Kahoot when people think of this, but it's Mentimeter's form, and it's a competitive quiz. Now there is good, bad, good and bad to this. The good is that it's competitive, it's interactive, and most students have fun. I've asked my students over and over again if they enjoy the Mentimeter, enjoy what I do, and they consistently say yes, they really enjoy what I do, but it is time. So if a student takes a little bit longer to answer a question, even though they got it right, they may lose points or may not get as many points compared to the other student who was able to answer it fast. But it is a way that I can assess if students generally understand the question. So here, let's just do a quick example. This is question one of one. So we would ask something relevant about either the course in general or about what we learned today. So here it says, what is two plus two? It gives them a couple seconds to read the question. And then here's the answer. What's two plus two? I'm gonna say four. And when all students have answered, it will automatically show on the screen who got what right and who got it wrong. And it is, let me rephrase that. It'll automatically show the number of people that got, got something right and the number of people that got something wrong. And on the next page, we will see a leaderboard. Now, it only shows the top 10 or so, but it allows students to compete with everyone else and it's interactive and it's competitive and it's fun. So right now, the generic name it gave me is Stingalicious. <laughs> so when I answered that question, it gave me my points based on how many questions I answered correctly and how fast I did. And I usually have four or five questions at the end of class. Now, students have fun with this. It sometimes get, gets competitive and it's fun. And I say, do we have any other questions before you go? And typically students want to get out of class, but some people will say, yes, I do have a class. What, what about this assignment? What about this test? What about this other example coming up? And they can ask other questions. For example, do we have class on Monday? Is it a holiday? Is it, you know, some other school event is going on? So they can ask me questions and I can answer them. I just enjoy this competitive, interactive presentation software and it's a lot of fun to work with honestly thank you for watching my video now let me know how you're going to use this program in your classrooms i've had a lot of success with it but i want to know how you do it don't forget to like subscribe comment and you have a great day and happy learning